Following the 4th of July floods, there has been a lot of meteorological misinformation online. And one of the most popular topics is cloud seeding. So let's talk about it. First of all, is cloud seeding real? Yes. Was there cloud seeding on July 2nd in Texas? Yes. Is cloud seeding to blame for the deadly floods? No. But before we get into cloud seeding, let's start with some basics. Clouds form when water vapor and invisible gas rises, cools, and condenses into liquid water droplets. These droplets collide and condense on tiny particles that are floating in the air. These tiny particles are called condensation nuclei. Condensation nuclei can be various things, such as dust, pollen, pollution, salt from ocean spray, etc. In the case of cloud seeding, silver iodide is used. When these water droplets get too heavy to stay suspended in the cloud, they fall to the earth as rain or snow. Cloud seeding can increase the amount of rainfall or snowfall that can be done from either the sky or the ground. Here's an example of how cloud seeding is performed from an aircraft. Planes use chemical flares to release silver iodide into the clouds. Silver iodide crystals are nearly identical to ice crystals. Water droplets are super cooled to less than 32 degrees to freeze the silver iodide. And the resulting ice crystals begin to stick together and condense as they fall as snow. As the water freezes, it releases heat, which rises. The updrafts lift moist air into the cloud, resulting in more precipitation. Cloud seeding only increases rain or snow by about 10%. And clouds that are likely to precipitate are targeted. And the effect of cloud seeding only lasts for a matter of hours. Think of cloud seeding like planting a seed into soil. A seed will not grow in unfertile soils and a cloud will not grow and produce more rainfall unless atmospheric conditions are already favorable. Now let's discuss the cloud seeding that occurred days prior in Texas. The South Texas Weather Modification Association seeded a storm in Carnes County. It's approximately 130 miles southeast of Kerr County on July 2nd, 2025. The clouds targeted were small and isolated and completely dissipated by 4 p.m. It is not possible that days later dispersed clouds could have caused such devastating flooding. So what caused the 4th of July floods? First of all, remnants of Tropical Storm Barry lingered over Central Texas for days and also the hill country terrain. Due to the rocky clay rich soils and sloping terrain, runoff funnels down, causing water to flow more rapidly and increases flooding. That's why Kerr County is part of what is called Flash Flood Alley. It's normal to want answers after a tragedy, but be cautious and don't believe everything that you see on the internet. This was Did You Know with Adelie Rowe.